Hi guys, welcome back to the Birds Party channel. Today I'm going to share with you how to make some really pretty DIY farmhouse rises. These rises are so popular right now and trending on Pinterest, on sites like Magnolia Home, Better Homes and Gardens, Crate and Barrel, you name it. So today I'm going to show you how to make them easily at home using materials you probably already have in your craft stash. These risers are perfect for decorating your home in a farmhouse style, but also creating a beautiful table centerpiece this season. I hope you'll enjoy the ideas and feel inspired to get creative making your own farmhouse risers at home. With that being said, let's get crafting! And basically the inspiration for this project came when I saw these curtain uh, rod finials these things that you add to the end of curtain rods and they were for sale at my local thrift store and i shared that video with you guys here on the channel so i'll be sure to leave the link down in the description box so i bought a bunch of these different sizes but if you haven't got access to that you could use doorknobs you could use your wooden candlesticks or these large wooden balls or wooden beads that you can easily find online on amazon or at any craft store as well so these will make great feet as well if you haven't got access to uh, the pieces that I'm using and the first project that I'm creating with them are these beautiful wooden risers that you can use to decorate your mantle a table centerpiece or anywhere else you like in your home and for our first one I'm using an old cheese board that I had at home it has a little groove as you can see because it had a cloche on top but the cloche broke and I've had it sitting in my garage for a long time and never knew what to do with it so I decided to use it for this project along with some other medium beads once again you can buy these at local craft store or online and I decided to decorate this uh, cake rise or this plate decorative plate with the wooden beads as you can see there so the first thing that I did was to give it a good clean because it was quite grubby sitting in my garage it was all a little bit sticky not nice <laughs> so I gave it a good clean and after that was nice and clean as you can see the wood is smooth because it was supposed to be uh, used for food like a, a cheese plate or a cheese board and so I don't have to do any treatment to that so if I want to add food to it I can I am not going to use that for uh, for this purpose I'm just going to use it to uh, decorate my home so I'm going to use it as a little plant riser or to add some candles to it but whatever you decide to use your cake risers for, make sure that if you're using it for food that you have the appropriate uh, finishings like, you know, uh, use walnut oil or something like that on raw wood. But this uh, plate here, I decided just to use the curtain finials to decorate it and use them as feet. And I am using some high temperature hot glue gun to stick down the feet to the bottom of the plate. Obviously, if you haven't got a high temperature glue gun, you can use a combination of just regular hot glue uh, that you can buy in any local craft store you know just the regular one with a combination of a strong glue like super glue or e6000 because the strong glue will help it the feet to adhere to the plate uh, permanently so you'll be much more secure than just the hot glue on its own and the hot glue will make sure that everything dries nice and fast so that you can kind of manipulate your cake riser if you wish to paint it or if you wish to varnish it or do anything else to it obviously before you use it properly wait for it to cure so that all the glue is dry and the feet do not come off and at this stage you can obviously use a, a ruler or tape measure and measure exactly where you're going to put the feet but i just eyeballed it you know it's just a decorative piece so i didn't need to do that and i eyeballed where the feet were going to go and just hot glued it in place so when it came to adding the decorative beads to my cake riser, I simply added some uh, strong glue once again, strong hot glue, and just used the little grooves to attach them end to end so as to hide the little holes on the size of the beads or the balls. The number of beads and balls obviously would depend on the size of plate that you have and the diameter of beads that you have available to you as well. So make sure that you place them all onto your plate as best as you can first before you glue them down so you know exactly how many beads you need and what kind of spacing you're going to need when you're gluing them down. And I think they look so adorable as a plant riser but also with a candle decorating anywhere in your home. And like I said, I'm not doing any varnishing or painting on this because I think it looks so adorable all natural with the two kinds of wood. 
And for my next project, I'm making this chunky wooden uh, farmhouse riser, which is perfect uh, to decorate uh, with a candle on top or a vase. And for that, I'm using this chunky round board that I had bought at my local uh, thrift store. I think it used to be the top of some sort of stand, plant stand or cake stand or even candle stand already. And I'm using the same little feet that I used for the first one over here and once again i decided to leave it raw because i like the wood and i like the way it looks uh, with the two together the two stands together but obviously feel free to paint it or varnish it like i have done with this one and for this third stand it's the same principle once again i'm using the larger feet or the larger uh, curtain finials and i'm using an mdf or plywood whatever this is uh, board that i had bought at my local uh, craft store exactly for this purpose so this came in a pack of three rounds and i know that you can find similar things at the dollar tree at the dollar store or even on amazon as well and obviously don't uh, think that you have to settle for something round you can do something rectangular square or whatever suits your fancy and once again i'm using my uh, high temperature hot glue gun to stick them down and this time around uh, I decided to stain the wood because my uh, plate, my round plate, uh, was like unfinished wood. So I decided to stain that a little bit darker. So I would have three different uh, rises, you know, of different kind of finishes. With the first two, they were like natural wood with a natural bead. And I really like the contrast of, of the woods. But for this one, I decided to varnish it with a dark oak color. And for that, because the curtain... Uh, finials were quite shiny and they were already finished i took some fine grit sanding block or sandpaper you can use that as well and just uh to kind of take some of that shine off to make sure that the varnish adhere properly to the feet obviously once again you can paint whatever color you like i think it looks so cool white with a little bit of distressing in black or you could paint it black you know any color that suits your fancy or that you have access to that will suit your decor feel free to change it up uh, to suit your taste. So like I said, I'm using a dark stain. This is a dark oak stain uh, and I've been using it for quite a few projects that I've been sharing here on the channel. Uh, so be sure to check out my home decor playlist so you can see all the goodies and I'll leave the link down in the description box for you. And to apply that to the feet, uh, I basically just used a, a foam brush because the feet had some little grooves so I wanted to make sure the varnish got into all the little nooks and crannies and then I took a rag and just wiped off most of the excess uh, to make sure that I had kind of like a, a smooth application and it looked a little bit uniform obviously not forgetting the size of the board if you haven't got a board like this I wanted to mention to you guys that you can use things that you may have already at home that you may have thrift, uh, thrifted a while back uh, or like round plates or even like uh, round signs that you can find in the Dollar Tree and you can paint them and use them for a project like this. So if you're varnishing or painting your wood, be sure to go along the grain. I started off a little bit wonky as you can see, but then I corrected my brush strokes and just make sure that you paint along the grain so you get a really nice finish. And here is up to you how many coats you do. You could leave it as is, but it was a little bit too orangey. So I decided to go in with a couple more coats. Obviously apply one coat, let it dry, and then go in with another coat on top. Now this step is totally optional because the varnish will have some a protective effect as well. But I decided to go in after everything was dry with a matte sealant, you know, a matte varnish because... I plan to use this to decorate quite a few things like a little coffee bar so I just wanted the finish to last. Now for a third type of farmhouse risers I'm making these really pretty galvanized risers and to make that I'm using a couple of galvanized buckets as you can see they are already galvanized and a couple of different sized cake pans which I had at home and really old as you can see very rusty and I did not use them anymore so I thought I could repurpose them but obviously if you haven't got that you can find similar items I'm sure at your local thrift store as well and the idea is just to find a, a top that kind of matches the diameter of your bottom so it doesn't look too weird when you stick the two together and for this one uh, I had a little uh, galvanized bucket so the first thing that I did was to take a pair of pliers to remove the handles and I was left with a couple of little holes as you can see. You could fill that up with some wood filler, some spackling or grout but I decided to leave it as is. I think it adds to the rustic charm. 
For the bottom pieces of my cake risers, you can see they're already galvanized. I did not need to do anything to it. But for the top parts, the cake pans, I'm using a high gloss silver spray. And this is all that I had on hand. Obviously, we're not going out to buy anything new and I did not fancy purchasing anything online. So this is what I used. But if you have like a Rust-Oleum, really high shine silver, I'd suggest that because it would give you a better finish, a more realistic galvanized look. But this looked just as pretty as well. And I was quite happy with the results. So all I did was to spray the outsides of my cake pans and I needed a couple of coats for them to make sure that everything was nicely covered. And obviously when that's dry, you repeat the process for the inside or for the interior part of the cake pans. So basically when creating a full galvanized look with any object most of the time you start off with the shiny silver because that will be your base coat when that is completely dry then the paint technique will involve the creating some stippling effect using a light gray paint and for that I'm using a mixture of black and white so that I can control uh, the tone of gray and the hue of gray so it has to be a light gray and you're also going to need a stipling brush or a sponge. I have a couple of options here, but I prefer to use the yellow and green one because it gave me a much better effect. So after you've mixed up your paint and you have a light gray color, you're just gonna take the rough edge of, or the rough side of your sponge, and you're going to, with the least amount of paint possible, so the sponge is nearly dry you're going to press it against the metallic paint to create the kind of like stippling effect and the galvanized look and this is kind of to imitate the bottom part of my risers as you saw that was already galvanized and to train yourself or to get used to this type of technique i suggest starting on the bottom of the cake pan so that you get used to uh, how the paint goes on how to work with the sponge because you are not going to be able to see the underside anyway so if you make any mistakes no big deal you've practiced enough on the bottom when you're happy with it move on to the sides of the cake pan obviously not forgetting the edges uh, and this will depend what kind of cake pan or plate or platter that you're using but the technique is the same just very lightly uh, do not rub because then you get you know stripes and it won't look uh, as authentic so just make sure that you dab lightly the sponge with very little paint until you get that galvanized look So at the end you should end up with something that looks a little like this and I really think this is a really cool technique, it's super easy and I really really love the result, I hope you guys like it too and obviously once the underside is dry make sure that you go in and do the same thing to the inside of your cake plate or whatever it is that you're using to create these farmhouse rises like i said you can use uh, plates you can use platters little wooden boards or anything else that you have available to you Now I want to tell you guys, if you make a mistake, which I did with my first uh, attempt, I was practicing this technique and I didn't like the result, so just go back in with some more uh, metallic spray paint because you painted the underneath of the cake pan, no one will see that. And you get kind of like a, a little texture as well, which is not bad at all for the galvanized look, makes it look more aged and more vintage. So once you're happy with the technique, just go over the top of your dry metallic paint once again with your sponge and voila, no harm done. Now 
Now, because the bottom of my riser were already galvanized, I didn't have to paint them at all, but I decided to go in with a little bit of paint anyway, just to make sure to dull out some of that shine because they were already galvanized, so it a little bit more shiny than the top part and to dull that out I just took some paint and did the exact technique to the bottom part. Obviously if you have a different colored bucket or something else you're using for the base uh, you have to paint it in the same fashion that we did for the cake pans you know the round tops. So whether you're using already a galvanized piece for the base or something that's painted a different color a different a flower pot or a vase or anything else like that just use the same technique as you can see uh, it works really well on metal but also on wood plastic or any other finish and as you can see the two pieces match pretty well and I'm really happy with the result given the fact that one of them was not a galvanized piece. And to attach the two pieces together, once again, I'm using my high temperature hot glue. And if you haven't got that, like I said before, just use regular hot glue with a strong glue like E6000, Gorilla Glue, Super Glue, etc. And once again, you could measure where you're going to place the base. Uh, but I just eyeballed it once again. It's just a decorative piece. And I decided to add a little bit more glue to the edge to make sure the two pieces were properly sealed and properly secured together. And you should end up with something that looks a little like this and I am absolutely in love you guys. This is probably one of my favorite projects to date. It was so easy as you guys saw and I love these types of rises to decorate not just for like a farmhouse look but to change up the decor on them for different holidays and different seasons to match the rest of the house you know I'm thinking for Christmas with little baubles little gnomes I think it would look so adorable and I hope you guys have a go as you saw it's super easy but also super fun Now at this stage, if you wish, you could go back in with some more paint, you know, to try and hide the seal of a glue. I didn't bother because no one's going to see that. It's going to be upside down anyway. Uh, so unless you really look underneath, you're not going to see the glue. And I am absolutely in love with how these risers turned up. And I've styled a little vignette to give you guys some ideas of what you could do with it. And like I said, it'd be so pretty decorated for different seasons. And I love how this looks so chic and so high end. Uh, for the modern farmhouse style. I hope you guys enjoy these ideas and feel inspired to have a go creating your own farmhouse rises. And if you like this video as always, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here so you don't miss any of the videos that I upload weekly. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.